Hey, everybody. Final thoughts time for Istanbul, Mocha and Bakshish, which I assume is how you pronounce it. I'm not really sure, but we'll go with Mocha and Bakshish. And by we, I mean myself and my guest co-host, Nathaniel Pollock. Say hi, Nathaniel. Hey, everybody. Let's jump right into it. The Istanbul, Mocha and Bakshish. Well, it's a very cool expansion for what is already a very, very cool game. I mean, I've said before that... I do believe Istanbul certainly earned, or certainly deserved its Kennerspiel des Jahres win because it was a phenomenal game, very, very well designed, really, really clever, and um, and this is more of the same. By which I mean more clever. I mean all the new stuff that it adds is it really helps enhance and uh, expand the gameplay experience without like you know bogging the game down at all. It's weird, even though now at higher player counts, you have to get one additional ruby, which I don't think I mentioned in the actual run through, because there's more ways to get rubies now. I wouldn't say it actually like, you know, lengthens the game at all. It's just because there's just more stuff you can do now in the game. And you can do it more efficiently. Being able to zip from one side of the map to the other like that is very empowering. It you know, feels really great. And all of the uh, the uh, paths to victory, I'd say, are you know interesting. You know, and of course, it's it's going to vary depending on what the, the layout of the board is. But you know, there's definitely lots to think about. And I mean, gosh, I could just leave it at that. But I don't, I'm curious to see what Nathaniel thinks. What did you? How did you uh, experience it? Okay. Well, of course, I come from the five player perspective. Okay, so um, you're talking about a five player experience here. Yes. Go, okay, go. Uh, every time I've played it, actually, I played it once with four, but every time else I've played it, I've played it with five people. All right. So I have not actually played it with very few people. Uh, Istanbul itself. You have a lot of people in your life who love you and will play games with you, and that's a wonderful thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so Istanbul itself with five people yes. uh, ends up being a little bit, I want to say crowded at the end of the game. Yeah. Uh, it results in... Uh, if you're trying to buy from the gemstone dealer and you're scrounging to get that high value money because enough people have purchased and then other people are scrounging to get their last gems. So they're going to the gemstone dealer. So you have to pay them the tax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of three. And um, you also have to then pay an extra one for each gem that's person before your turn comes around. So it can be very difficult to get that final gem if you're like, especially since there's only three main ways to like, well, I guess there's four because there's the cart. But well, like, I mean, everybody the, has the cart. Like little, no, those yeah. are side bits, really. Yeah, but there's only there's three main ways that can be taken from you, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, so ended up being a little crowded, and this expansion solved all those issues. Now, okay, that's interesting. That's a good point. It's certainly something I never experienced. But you say solved. I'm curious. I mean, to take a step back to Istanbul, I would think that means the end of <laughs> Istanbul Five Players is is very tense and fraught with peril and excitement as you try to, you know, one-up everybody else or get there one step ahead of everybody else. I mean, are you saying that that's literally an issue that detracts from regular Istanbul for you and the folks you've played with? Yes, because the excitement, the excitement is good mm -hmm. if it's a close race where it's like, oh, that person has five gems. How many turns will it take me to get my sixth gem? Mm -hmm. Like, can I get it before them? Uh, it's bad when it's that person has the fifth gem. How can I get before them? Oh, wait, I can't because this player is sitting on the tile I need to be going to. Yeah. So okay. I would be able to win, but this person stopped me. And not because they were purposely trying to stop me, but just because they happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time that I needed to. Have, and you are two bucks short. Yeah, I mean, you, and Istanbul adds two new ways mm -hmm. to get chance. Yeah. And players. a bigger board. With, you know, a lot yeah, there's 20 spaces instead of 16. So uh, it, it, it definitely, I mean, there's still a little bit, you can still have that kind of, oh, somebody wrong place, wrong time, and now it's a lot harder. But, I mean, that's removed a lot. Yeah. It's, it's, it's much more in the vein. Oh, the frustration the back end of the game, yeah. you, you're more like, can I make my thing happen before you do? Can I get it to work? Right. Uh, less of, will I get screwed? <laughs> cool. Well, that's interesting. Um, 
you know, from the other end of the spectrum, the two player, you know, that's really not that much of an issue to begin with, obviously, because even with the dummy players, I mean, the, the two player game is really not that the board is never that tight. So it, it's not like that really has much of an impact. But it is interesting. The more I play Istanbul, I mean, I've played it, I don't know, over half a dozen times now, which for me is a lot because I generally don't get to play replay games over and over and over again. But I played Istanbul several times. And while I've always liked it, and I have actually gotten a chance to play it as a three-player game a couple of times. Um, I've never really felt that it's at its best with two because, well, I mean, I, in my original run-through of the original Istanbul, I, I kind of talked about what struck me as in two-player, a fundamental um, misbalance between the different paths to victory. And it's interesting. Um, I, I'm not sure if this fixes what I, and by the way, that, that was a fundamental issue I had that nobody in the world shared. Everybody else thought I was crazy thinking that the uh, Sultan's Palace was fundamentally a, a shorter path than um, the, uh, the, the the gem merchant. But it's interesting, I thought going in here, now you've got a third way to go, and it really kind of evens the playing field because you, you can use that coffee to buy from anywhere, just instantly, whenever you want. Um, and, you know, and that was all very, very cool. But what I was surprised by is the coolest thing in this expansion, what I think is by far the neatest, coolest thing, is the, um, the guild tiles which I, ha I didn't really know about going in. But, you know, not the guild tiles, the guild cards, because they are so insanely powerful. Every single one of them just does amazing, off-the-wall, powerful things. I mean, it's, it's a tough, tough choice. Every time you draw two, which one are you going to take? Because they're both the best things you've ever seen in your life. And, um, and so that's really cool. And I love the, 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 the way you have to pay the price for such a huge power is you have to give up a turn, an entire turn, in a race game where it always comes down to the wire, or often comes down to the wire. That's painful to give up a whole turn. And you know, and so that works. But when I did get a chance to play this as a three-player game with a, a guy who visited us, and um, my God, it works so much better there than it did as two players because it introduces what I thought was actually probably the coolest thing I've experienced in Istanbul so far, the notion of purposely standing still you know um you know I, I get a superpower card i don't want to use it right away i will hold on to it for a while i will wait until either there is a situation where crap i need to get there and you are in the way and i do not want to get or two people are in the way or whatever it is i don't want to have to spend money to get in there oh now's the time to play the thing and i'll get some big cool superpower thing and after you guys get out of the way i'll be able to go or if you want to be a little bit more aggressive oh you want to come here yeah, I mean, th this is the last step you need to get the last bit of money you need to trigger the end of the game. And I'm in your way right now, but I'm about to leave. I don't think so. I think I'll stand still. And now that just messed you up and you have to, you know, that delayed you. But in, in the, at the time when I'm getting some really big, cool, superpower move, I'm also making, I'm stalling you. And I thought that worked really, really well. And it kind of breaks my heart that that completely disappears in two player because the way the two-player balances by just having these dummy players who stand still, they don't really replicate the reality of another human player. Human players are always on the move. The dummy players in the two-player game just stand still forever. And that means in the two-player game, a lot of what makes this expansion and the game itself really, really cool is lost. So that was actually kind of a little bit of a bummer for me. Maybe I wouldn't have even experienced if I hadn't actually played this with three. But once I played this with three, I have to admit, I'd almost have a hard time playing this with only two because I know so much of what this offers is gone. And um, I, you know, I don't know if it's the same for you. I don't know with five players if those kind of considerations are completely immaterial because there's just so many people running around. You know, I mean, you, you can't you won't have as much. No, it, is, it is definitely still there. I mean, the whole, I mean, I wasn't sold on those cards for at first because I was like, you, you, you skip your turn, but you don't just skip the action that you would have done on your turn, you also skip moving. And yeah. generally moving, it's a, the locations are never close by. They ne even if you randomly put them out there, they never seem to be in the right place. Yeah. So getting to your next location is such a big concern that a lot of time you're trying to assemble all your pieces on the way there. You're trying mm -hmm. to figure out how to assemble the pieces on the way there. Especially since in a five-player game, you can't just focus on one of the markets. I guess market's not for everyone because there are markets in the game, but yeah. uh, the gem dealers. You can't just focus on the Sultan's Palace or the gem dealer. You kind of have to diversify a little bit. Um, but yeah, skipping your turn and not moving uh, is definitely usable to somewhat block people. Yeah. Uh, 
but it's only for like one turn, so it's not like it's really, it's really not it's attacking not the them so much. Right, it's not like malicious so much, and it doesn't like destroy their whole plan. It stalls yeah. them by a turn. Yeah. And not being able to move so you can wait for somebody else is so relevant in a five-player game. I imagine, it, yeah. It's so I relevant. Yeah. So, Speaking of blocking, um, I'm curious, in a five-player game, what kind of impact does that literal roadblock have? Um, because, again, the fewer players you have, it's much easier to sit back and identify, right, I understand what you're doing. I can see the circuit you've created for yourself. I know what your next step has to be because it's just me and you, and I can, I, you know, I can discern what's going on. And so it can be used pretty aggressively. Um, with five players running around, I don't know, is that the case so much? Uh, d d does it get used? Okay, the, the tavern's interesting because um, the three abilities that set on the tavern, um, only one really got used mm. significantly in, mm -hmm. in the game. Only the one that allows you to pay four coffee and three resources, whether that's like the pineapple. The bakshish. That's the bakshish in the game. That's, that's the bribe. You're bribing somebody with a little right. bit of coffee and some fruit. Um, that's the only side that really got used a lot. Yeah. Um, and uh, just a minor note, um, there is a little bit of that sense of you get to take it from anywhere, so you're going to be looking at what other people are doing, mm -hmm. and whoever's winning, you're going to try to pick what they're doing so you can make it a little bit harder for them. Um, that wasn't a big issue, just something to mention. Yeah. Uh, but as far as the roadblock, it was placed once and didn't do much of anything because since you have so many other players running around, you can put a roadblock in front of one player but, I mean, everybody's still playing around. So, I mean, you're stalling one player by a turn. Yeah. Well, I imagine if you have somebody else, else, there is somebody else. who's a good, like, you know, two gems ahead of everybody else because, you know, they've, they've just worked it out better. They've come up with a shorter path that was more efficient. I mean, I would imagine it becomes more attractive to just use it under those circumstances. And then, of course, it also has the side benefit of letting you, it's you know, like, letting your nephew out of jail and getting access to any action anywhere on the board, although this time it costs you. I mean, so, you know, there's pluses to it as well. Plus, unlike letting the nephew out of jail, when I do that to take some action on the other side of the board that I can't reach, I'm implicitly helping somebody else because I'm basically giving them free resources. This time, you're not. You're grabbing something on the other side of the board and only hurting other players. See, in the same, in the same vein as that, well, so letting your nephew out is a lot more relevant in a two-player game because you're directly helping your opposing party. Yeah. In a five-player game, you're you're not. I mean, unless the leader sends your nephew back, I mean, you're just helping somebody who's behind get a little bit ahead, mm -hmm. which is not that big of a concern in a five-player game. I mean, helping one person a little bit is not nearly as impactful as helping the one opposition a little mm -hmm. bit. So... Yeah, uh, the nephew in the the plea or your family member or whatever in whatever, in, yeah, yeah. I like calling him sending nephew. your your breaking your person out of jail is what it seems like, but <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, totally, totally, yeah. I mean, yeah, your bribing guard um, is in the clink once more. You get him out, he runs off and gets into trouble again, and next thing you know, he's back in. And the coolest thing, of course, is turning him in yourself with the yeah, card. with the card. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, go, go do this oh. thing from you. Yeah, for me. Yeah, okay, he's over there. Oh. So. Yeah. So for you, uh, as somebody who plays this predominantly at higher player counts, it's a marked improvement. It significantly then improves the overall experience. Oh, I would not play Istanbul without it. Really? In a five-player okay. game. I well, would. Like, yeah. Cool. And I mean, I, and I think it works well at the lower counts too, but I do think with fewer people on the board. And particularly, the biggest problem is, you know, being able to stand still is great, but if you're only playing two players, so especially now that the board is, what, 20% bigger, um, there's not that much of an opportunity to need to stand still or to need to, get to um, uh, oh yeah, to stand still either to, you know, kind of mess with somebody or to wait for somebody else to get out of the way because there's just not that much interplay. And it, the dummy players will never move. And, you know, it was it's interesting playing this and, you know, comparing it to experience I had playing it with more players really makes me think, I don't know that I could play Istanbul now without a higher player count. I just don't know if I can go back to two. It works, but so much of what makes the game special and fun and have so much zazz is lost. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, and, you know, and, and this thing, it's weird. It, it, 
playing this expansion really kind of accentuated that even more for me. Um, and again, I'm, you know, I'm probably in the minority because I know a lot of people love this as a two-player game. But the more I play it, the less I like it as a two-player and the less I think I'd be inclined to play something else. But, man, I would love to play this as a five-player game someday. That's just got to be bonkers insane. I could only imagine with everybody running around and getting in each other's way. It must be quite a ride. It, it's pretty fun. I'm, yeah. I'm going to say it. Istanbul is, especially with this expansion, it is one, it's one of the more fun five-player experiences I've had in games, especially since you, you don't get bogged down on turns. Turns don't yeah. bog you down because of how Istanbul plays. Yeah, and, yeah. And this expansion just solves all the issues that I had with the original game. So, I mean, it, it just it just makes the game better for five players, in my experience. And four, I assume. You mentioned you played it with four also. Yeah, I, I haven't played the expansion with four, actually. Oh, okay, all right. So, cool. so I'm not well, okay, then I think that's as good a place to stop as any. I'm going to say thanks, everybody, for watching. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, as always, let me know. Otherwise, I'm just going to wish you a very, very nice day, or have a nice day, rather. Talk to you later. So long. Say it. Say it. Ciao. Oh, not ciao. It's bye 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 <laughs> So long. He's not going to say it, folks. All right. Bye-bye.